Hey guys, it's Coding Jesus. In today's video, I wanted to review my old resume, the resume that I used as a self-taught developer to apply to several companies and actually land several job offers in the coding space. Now, of course, all the tips in this video will be tips based off my own anecdotal experience and the experience that I've garnered from both hiring managers and recruiters. But overall in this video, what I plan to do is to show you how I structured my resume, how you should be thinking of your resume and how you should be structuring the bullet points on your resume in order to stand out and really just communicate both your previous experience, maybe your educational experience, maybe your you know, previous portfolios, your current portfolios, to prospective recruiters and different companies. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so on the screen right now, you can see my resume. Now, of course, I've blurred out different things, different, uh, like di different pieces of information that I find relevant to myself, private information, et cetera, such as my name, my email. You can try to call this number, but you won't get anybody because my number has changed uh, and that is not my number. All right, guys, so let's, let's, let's talk about what you actually should have on your resume and how you need to structure your resume. So the first thing, whether you're self-taught or you went to school or you came from a boot camp, is employers most likely would like to see your portfolio, what you've actually done, right? Having a piece of paper is great, but if you haven't actually done anything with what you've learned, then that piece of paper doesn't mean as much as you think it does. So the first section I would put on is your portfolio. That's exactly what I did here. So let's take a look. Now, before we actually look at each bullet point and I break down how you should structure your bullet points, what you should notice is kind of like a pattern here, right? Limit order book and trading engine, bond pricer, try, try again, algorithmic design. I was applying for finance and AI based companies. So my portfolio should cater, of course, towards what they're looking for, their requirements. Of course, I came from a background of finance and I was applying for a company in the trading space, one that would require some sort of financial understanding, at least a minimum financial understanding. And so the projects that I built or decided to showcase on my resume were finance based projects. Let's look at the first project and of course the later ones as well and kind of break down how these points are structured. So limit order book and trading engine. Built a limit order book and matching engine handling both market and limit orders for inverse futures, making extensive use of move semantics, smart pointer, STL containers, and external libraries such as Chrono, Boost Optional, Boost Programming Options, and Boost Any. Utilize Python and Chrono to profile engine performance, trading simulation clocked in at an average of 4,000 executions per second on consumer hardware, and this is a demo. Let's first talk about the demo, and then we'll talk about the actual points and how we should break them down and how we should craft them. In terms of the demo here, this was of course a digital resume and the recruiter or anybody that was interested in my resume was able to click on this demo and see the video of my trading engine on YouTube. I think that's a great way for people to understand kind of what the project, what project you've built and really visualize what you're writing on paper. Now let's actually talk about the construction of these points. So when it comes to any bullet point guys on your resume, you wanna break it down into three steps. The first is, what action did you take? The second thing is, what was involved in that action? Whether that's who, what, where, when, why? And the last thing is, what's the result of that action? So let's look at my first bullet point here. Built a limit, or, uh, built a limit order book and matching engine, handling both uh, market and limit orders for inverse futures. Okay, that's the what, what you do. You start with the verb. I built, I prepared, I crafted, whatnot. I built a limit order book, okay? The next part is kind of the who, what, where, when, why. So what was involved in this, what you use, right? So I used move semantics, smart, smart pointer, SDL containers, and some external libraries. Now, before I get to the last bullet, the last point you should have in each bullet point, the results, I wanna talk about the actual who, what, where, when, why. When you guys are crafting a resume, anything you guys put on your resume is really fair game for questioning. So when I hear have move semantics, right? I need to know what move semantics are before I put this down on my resume. Don't put things that you don't know on your resume because it's all fair game, right? The hiring manager, whoever's interviewing you, maybe your future boss can ask you, hey, tell me about move semantics. You know, what's a smart pointer? How, does it differ how is it different from a raw pointer? Can you tell me what the difference between an iterator and a pointer is, right? So everything you guys have on your resume is fair game for them to ask you and you should be quite familiar with the content. Now the last point of every bullet, so we talked about the who or the what, so you start with the verb, then the where, when, how, why. The last point should be the result, and a lot of people miss out on this point. The result, I decided to put in a separate bullet point. Utilize Python and Chrono to profile engine performance, trading simulation clocked at an average 4,000 executions per second on consumer hardware. That's the result. Oftentimes people talk about what they did, but they don't talk about how that impacted the organization or the positive feedback even that they've received for that job that they've done. And so what you guys should really be focusing on or hammering down is what was the, what was the result? What was the outcome? We live in an economy that's result driven, that is 
hopefully in most cases, merit driven. And if you can't attach some sort of merit or some sort of results to your bullet point, don't add that bullet point on your resume. All right, let's get into my second point here, bond pricer. So of course I was applying for a finance position. I wanted to show that I have some sort of finance background. And so I decided to build a project uh, that's a bond pricer. So a simple command line tool. So follow test driven design principles by leveraging cash as used in a testing framework to build a Monte Carlo simulation that prices corporate bonds utilizing C++'s concurrent, uh, concurrency API. Made extensive use of functor objects, lambda expressions, and STL algorithms in yield curve generation. So there's really one to two things here. Of course, I followed the same structure that I mentioned before, the verb or what you did and the who, what, where, when, why. And actually here, I do not really have a result. Something that can improve in this resume is to add a result to this bond pricer. Did, some, did I share it on GitHub and I got positive feedback for it, right? Any sort of result that you can think of that would play towards what you did, okay? But what I want you to notice here is in my first bullet point or my first project, I really wrote about me knowing to code or, or the general understanding here is that, okay, he built something with code. Now, when so in software development, there's really two things. There's building and then there's testing, making sure that what you built is maintainable and that it can be tested because if it's not tested, it most likely will not be supported in your organization. And so what I decided to do with this second project is highlight that I understand what test driven development is, that I understand what writing unit tests are. And I, of course, did that in this first bullet point by stating I follow test driven design principles using Catch's unit testing framework. Right now, I personally use Google tests and GMOC, uh, but that's beyond the point, right? I wanted to show that I know what test driven development is. All right, let's go to the last project here. So the last port project that I decided to incorporate in my C++ portfolio is a try, try again algorithm. Of course, that's gonna be here while I'm talking. Designed a recursive algorithm that cracks Jane Street's October monthly puzzle, try, try again in under 25 seconds, making use of geometric transformations and two dimensional objects. This was a demo, a link to the YouTube video in which I showcase that, which will obviously play right here. The next bullet point is featured on Jane Street's puzzle leaderboard as one of only 40 others who managed to solve the puzzle in a span of a month, November puzzle also solved. So once again, break this down as to what he did, the who, what, where, when, why component and what the result was. So what I did was design a recursive algorithm to crack some sort of puzzle. What did I use? Well, I used geometric transformations and two dimensional objects. Right off the bat, that's showing the recruiter or employer that I know how to code up geometrical objects. I know how to code up uh, two dimensional objects, right? So I have a, some spatial reasoning. I have a sense of kind of geometric understanding. The last point here should have, within this bullet point should have been my result, but I decided to refactor this bullet point and include my result as the last bullet point, right? So the last bullet point is featured on Jane Street's puzzle leaderboard as one of only 40 others who managed to solve the puzzle in the span of a month. November puzzle also solved, right? So that is the result, the result section of my, you know, three section bullet point schema that I'm communicating here. Once again, the action, who, what, where, when, why, and then the result of that. Now, why did I decide to have two projects that were project based and one that was algorithm design based? Well, like I said, guys, I was applying for finance companies, but I wasn't only applying for finance companies. So I actually, using this resume, got an offer for a job that paid $125,000 in Canada in an AI company. So an AI company doesn't really care about finance, but this bullet point right here, this pet project right here, plays towards kind of the spatial reasoning, geometric understanding, and it's more broad in the sense that it can appeal to different types of employers and recruiters. It can appeal to somebody in AI, it can appeal to somebody in finance. All right, so once you have your portfolio there as maybe somebody that's self-taught or a boot camper or somebody that's coming out of school, the next thing you wanna have is your employment experience if you have it at all. So I blurred out a lot of my employment experience. Uh, it's not really relevant to, to this video. What is relevant is the way I broke down each bullet point, right? So I took out all the kind of important, not important, but all the information that would lead you to understand, you know, who this company is, um, because I want to be conscientious. That isn't the point of this video, who my previous employer was, etc. The point of this video is understanding how I break down these bullet points and how I break down my resume into sections. Okay, so the next part is the employment experience. I was an analyst at a company and I was a new to the company, so I was rotating across various divisions. There was several rotations, but two of them were most important. So two of them were most relevant for software development and the field that I was in, the field that I was gunning for, rather. Okay, so once again, I break it down the same way, really. What did I do? Start with the verb, 
who, what, where, when, why, and result. So I'm not gonna go too much in, in depth as to each point. I just wanna kind of read it out to you so you understand that three point breakdown. Partnered with X from X to improve upon the initial white paper of blah, a blah, 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 blah. So I describe what it is. And the data used in blah was actually then used in a publication that was called blah, 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 and was on the company's website, right? So I got kind of the verb, the who, what, where, when, why bit. You only need a couple of the who's, the what's, the where's, the when's, and the why's. You don't need all of them. You need the relevant points. And then the last one was a result. What was it? What was the data from whatever you built used for, right? So the data was used in a publication called blah. And this was a link towards the actual website of the company and the publication. All right, the next point. Designed and built, blah, 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 a state-based database which captures a change in the state of all broadcast, well, whatever, transactions, and accompanying memory pool metadata deployed under whatever infrastructure, the company's infrastructure, using Docker and Kubernetes. So, of course, I'm applying for a developer role. And as me applying for a developer role, I want to show that I have previous experience handling kind of DevOps infrastructure, being exposed to DevOps infrastructure. I'm by no means a pro at this, but I think it's important to still mention that you have experience maybe working with a DevOps team or pretty much not just being siloed as a single developer cranking up code, right? You have exposure to other DevOps instruments and DevOps infrastructure. And then the result, what's the result? Used by blah, blah, blah teams, right? So a team ended up using the data that I was able to produce through the application that I built. Okay, the next rotation, rotated with blah, led a series of back tests using given programming language in partnership with whoever to assess the susceptibility of a prospective product to whatever, right? Communicated findings and proposed whatever that increased the cost to do something by 26 fold to the executive. So once again, the first thing you wanna start off is a verb, touch on some of the who, what, where, when, why's, and the last thing is the result, right? Communicated findings and proposed, what, proposed whatever to increase the cost of whatever I was doing by 26 fold to the executive. Okay, the last point here, assess blah, 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 due to index rebalancing for three different index methodologies. And those were the index methodologies in brackets here uh, in whatever language that I was uh, at the time familiar with. Findings led to the adoption of a volume-based approach to replace whatever. Uh, the company is currently uh, equally weighted methodology for all blah, blah, blah indices, okay? So that's how you break down these points, right? Okay, so additional information. So in this section, you really wanna hammer on a couple of things. Skills, additional languages, courses, interests, hobbies, anything you find relevant for an employer to know about you. So of course I wanted to start off with skills, right? What do I know? So I know C++, Python scripting. I've dabbled in a bit of Q and KDB, uh, a programming language that maybe not, not, not many people are familiar with. And then some DevOps tools, some source control tools like Travis, Docker, GitHub. Now you'll notice that I mentioned Kubernetes here, but I didn't mention it in the skill section. Why is that? The reason being is because I was familiar enough with Docker to be comfortable in, in, in talking about what it is and how I used it. But Kubernetes, while it was something that I had exposure to, it was more on the more on the hardcore DevOps side, and it wasn't something that I was controlling or I was uh, very comfortable in explaining the exact details of. Right, so I have Docker and I don't have Kubernetes there, and of course GitHub to show them that I know how to use Git and source control. Then any additional courses you've taken. Maybe this was a follow-up to a bootcamp course that you've taken, or maybe an online course that you've taken. Maybe you've taken some C-sharp game development courses or a Udemy game develop cor development course, and that's what you're gunning for. This is where you wanna place the additional courses. The next thing I find is, I find it's quite interesting if I see somebody's resume and it says languages, I'm always interested in what languages people speak. Now it's not relevant per se to your given position, but it's always nice to maybe connect, connect with somebody on a given language, maybe they also speak that language. So fluent in Hebrew, and then Mandarin, so so yes, I speak both those languages. Then my interest, right? So what am I interested in? I'm interested in political philosophy, Austrian school economics, public speaking, cryptocurrency, men's fashion, and fitness and stoicism. Now, why did I add this interest? It isn't only because I needed to fill up this one page resume. Notice my resume is not one page, not longer. The reason I decided to add interest is because you do not only want to connect with your interviewer on a professional level, you also want to connect with him on a personal level. You can be a wizard in C++ and be a genius, but if nobody wants to work with you, then you're not gonna get that position and you're not gonna fit that role. At the end of the day, based off my own experience, disclaimer, my own experience, what will happen is that the hiring managers, maybe one of them, maybe multiple of them, 
will sit around a table and they will talk to each other and they will say, the first thing they will say is this, can you guess what that will be? I liked him or her, or I didn't like him or her. That's what they'll say. It's just the reality of it, right? You can be a genius in coding, but if you do not make a good first impression and you're not likable in an interview, then you won't get the job. And the way to increase your likability is to connect to people on a personal level through your interest section. All right, and really the last thing that you want to have on your resume um, is your education section, especially when you become more senior. Now, if you're watching this and you're more senior, this video might not be as relevant for you, but once you become more senior, people care about where you worked and what you've produced rather than when you went, where you went to school. But if you're coming out of school or you're maybe coming out of a boot camp or you're a self-taught developer, I'd say put your education section uh, as, as one of the last sections, right? Fill it up with your portfolio, fill it up with additional information, and then have your education section at the bottom. Now, if you're coming out of school and you have no portfolio and you don't have, you can't think of any additional information and you have no employment experience, no internships, then that kind of sucks, but it can still be salvageable. In those situations, you might want to put your education higher up on your resume. Uh, but for me, as a self-taught developer with previous employment experience, maybe you went to a boot camp, you know, put the education kind of at the end of your resume. That would be my suggestion. Okay, so where'd I go to school? Bachelors of Commerce, Queen's University, Kingston, Ontario, class of 2018. Not ashamed to say where I went to school, right? It's not very revealing. Write your GPA if you did well. So cumulative GPA 4.11 out of 4.3. Previously ranked in the top 3% of my class, ranked 13 out of 551 students. If you have any scholarships or awards, you wanna put that on your education section as well. So, you know, whatever scholarship that I got in the years that I've received it for every year. And this part's actually quite interesting. So I got an award for the National Investment Banking Competition. That was a competition with 150 different teams with pitching, where we were, where we were pitching to people that worked at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, et cetera. And we eventually had as the, you know, the top two teams, as being part of the top two teams, we had to present in front of 500 people, right? That pitch that we've created in front of 500 people and a panel of judges. This is not really relevant towards development, but it can, it can be positively construed as this. If you are a national investment banking competition winner, maybe the employer can see this as this guy is a good communicator. Because in order to win that sort of competition, you need to be able to stand on stage and succinctly communicate ideas to a crowd of 500 onlookers, right? You want somebody in your company that not only can code, but can communicate his code well. And I think this point kind of plays towards it if the interviewer knows what the national investment banking competition is. Even if they don't, in the interview, they can still ask you that question. When, you, when they ask you, of course, you answer it and you spin it in a way that will be favorable towards the position you're applying for. Okay, and the last point in education, if you did any international exchange, I did an international exchange in Fudan University in Shanghai. So when I was in Shanghai, I completed a semester at Fudan University in Shanghai, China. All right, guys, and that's the really, that's a, that's the resume review and not much else to say. You want to start off with your portfolio, employment experience, then you want to go into additional information. And lastly, end off with your educational experience, unless you're coming out of university and you have no employment experience and no portfolio. If that's the case, you can't really fix the employment experience because you don't have any internships, but you can fix a portfolio by using what you've learned in school and applying it to create pet projects. If you like this video guys, if you found it useful, give me a thumbs up, it's very appreciated. Subscribe for more content. If you didn't like this video, double tap the thumbs down just to show me how much you didn't like this video. And I hope to make more content for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. Cheers.